Good morning. You asked me last week to talk about conscious aging. And I have thought about this a lot. Mm -hmm. Shall I first uh, do a sort of introduction to the, to the, the audience? that I'm Heidi from the wisdomfactory.net and this conversation, which will be very interesting, is with Lorraine Laubscher in South Africa. And we have already done a conversation, a recording with her in the Integral African Dialogue series, where we talked about her role in, the, in bringing the apartheid to a peaceful end. And so if you are interested in that, Go there and listen to that. Anyway, I thought Lorraine is a perfect person for conscious aging. Imagine that she did her PhD with 83. So what better example can we have for doing something very meaningful in our lives? And as I have invited her for conscious aging now, now we talk about aging and if it is spiraling down to beige in the levels of uh, development as laid out by Don Beck in Spiral Dynamics, no? Well, we can go back to Jung and his, uh, what did he call it? The, the collective unconscious. And as we arrive in this world in beige, as a little, little uh, as you're born, we found working with the neonatals that beige is there. We've done all tests that I'm not going to discuss now, but it appears that we start off in beige. And sometimes, the terrible twos are purple. <laughs> <laughs> but let us go back to the collective unconscious. And we look at people that live in beige. And people are inclined to look down on beige. Heidi, I have to every time reiterate that there's positive and negative in every one of the systems. So you get that lovely, the baby, recognizing, looking, gurgling as, and then you get the person who has got Alzheimer's or uh, is like we have here, some very, very old in the hundreds. There's a three or four that are in the hundreds. Some are sprightly, some are just sitting and uh, one lady just prays all the time and there are men that just sit and don't say anything. There's others again that go, oh, oh, oh. So we have the range here of people and they are in beige again. So what is the baseline for beige? The baseline for beige is safety and security. So being here, the nurses provide safety and security. When people have lost, people call it lost their minds, when they don't know who they are anymore and they walk around, we have to restrain some people because otherwise they would walk out and get into the street and be knocked over. But they will walk. There's one gentleman, he came and climbed into somebody else's bed and went to sleep. And then we had to have the other patient understand why somebody was sleeping in their bed. <laughs> and all these, <clears throat> it's part of the negative side of the unconscious that people have not worked in their life from a soul point of view. They've worked very much on the physical point of view. I know some of the backgrounds of certain of the people 
the one lady was she it was her birthday on Friday. She was ninety, and she was <clears throat> the matron of the Baraguana Hospital, which is the biggest hospital in the African continent. Mm -hmm. uh, it it was the Baraguana was the part of Soweto. And all the people that were injured when the riots and everything else, they would have all gone through Barrow or Gwanath. So there's a little bit of a history there as well, but I can just smile at her. And that's terribly important at this page. Just think of what you do with a baby. You smile at that and you say, coo -coo -coo -coo, whatever you say, what do you do with an old person? So I've developed a ritual because I think rituals are important to these people. Just as it's in the unconscious, if I walk past, I go. I don't do a big wave, I just do. And they all do this back. Mm -hmm. So then they see me, I can get a smile now out of people and I'll go past and they all wait for me to greet each and every one. They sit in two rows of these great big chairs, the big television they can watch. They play a lot of um, that man, gentleman, who plays the violin, a Hollander, and he plays a lot of music that's uh, almost folky kind of music. And he has a whole orchestra and a choir and everything. It's a, he's very well known, but they just love him. And this, you see the feet tapping. <laughs> the power must, of music. Yes. The power of music, yeah. yeah. So I must come back to, you see the foot stomping. You'll watch a baby, it's legs go. Right, right from before it's born. So that, that is something within us, a uh, rhythm or something like that. So when you looked at all the African dancing, you saw that. Yeah. There's a good program running at the moment on CNN of Africa. It's got all different things of Africa is worth watching. And I'm going back to the kind of things that I've been looking at. The Bushmen, you know what I'm talking about now, the people in the Kalahari who were, are termed Bushmen, now they were nomads, just as I've read about there were people like that in Europe once upon a time, way, way back. Now, that is in beige. They come in beige. Their bottom line is safety and security. They don't gather together in families. It's not the same as in purple, a family blood relationship. It's we work together, we be together to help one another, to, uh, to hunt. We have to, can't do it by ourselves. Anything that you can't do yourself, we go together. And when you talk to people about beige, people want to say they haven't got any sense. Then I go back to my Bushman and I say, the Bushman had 26 senses. <laughs> Whereas most of the people we've got have only got, and some of them extended to eight. But why can I say this? I can say this because the Bushmen, where could <clears throat> they weren't educated, they did not have um, what would we call it? <clears throat> um, they didn't have university education. <laughs> they didn't read and write. They drew pictures on the walls. Mm -hmm. 
And even today, we can't find out what they mix their paints with because they don't come off. I mean, they've been there for centuries and they don't come off. The same as you've got rock paintings in Europe and the same thing happens. But now think of it, they can mix poisons and put them on the end of an arrow that you can shoot. I am not sure whether it just paralyzes the animal. I don't believe it kills the animal. I don't believe there is that within that bush. But it most definitely, most definitely, definitely paralyzes it. And then, and then there was a ritual where you bowed to the animal and then you took his spirit, life, whatever you wanted to call it. So we have to look at these things. We can't just be looking ahead. We've got to look where you came from. If you don't know where you came from, you will put the wrong thing in when you go forward. Yeah, and I think also the, the, the idea that they were so sophisticated to be able to discern what a poison is, to have found out the poison, have found out how it works, how they have to go ahead to, 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 to get food, you know? And this is all, we, we undervalue that. We couldn't do that if we were alone now somewhere. <laughs> we didn't, wouldn't know how to survive, they did. Well, this is why if you go back to looking at <coughs> 1940, uh, 1939, 1945, and you saw how people survived in ghettos and all kinds of things, it's, uh, there are always lessons to be learned. And so <coughs> I admire Lung Jung and his collective unconscious, because I think that and perhaps that's where we transfer information. <clears throat> I think, I think there's a lot of the people that would be looking at conscious aging that maybe have looked at uh, yoga and have looked at, uh, I think of Gandhi and what he did, because it, there are a lot of spiritual paths the Buddhists, the, and we have here in Africa, the Songomas, mm -hmm. and they can tap into the collective unconscious. Yeah, I experienced so that. We did, if you look at the Rosicrucians and what the Rosicrucians are saying, you can understand now why I've gone all over the world to look at all of these things, because I have been preparing for old age a long time. <laughs> and I still haven't found it. I'm still working. I'm still practicing. <laughs> so I'm not a I'm not a completed I'm not completed yet. Whether I will uh, I come back, I know to uh complete some things that, that I chose to do in this particular life. And I have, I did manage to do one or two things that I consciously knew I had come to correct, I did that. And then every now and again, I trip over what I should have been doing. <laughs> and so maybe there's another lifetime that I can make some adjustments. <laughs> I'm like a motor car, it needs to be serviced now and again. <laughs> so, you can understand that the value systems are a living system to me. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. You have to start living it. You have to be able to be in that beige. The negative side of beige is when we have people that are not able to spiritually overcome, they're just sitting there. You, you get it all over the world, you get those that are. Then you get the people that purposely take themselves there through use of drugs. 
and Claire Graves worked with people with addicts, mm -hmm. particularly in the prison system in America. And I had a friend, uh, he was a doctor, he was a very clever doctor, and, but he got hooked on pills. And he phoned me one day and he said to me, Lorraine, I'm sitting here, I've got all the pills laid out on my bed, I think I should do away with myself. And I said, if you do that, I'll come down and give you a bloody good hearty. <laughs> Don't you dare. You phone and get yourself in an ambulance. And they had to take the dog with, because he wouldn't go anywhere without his dog. So they got an ambulance, put him in the ambulance with the dog and brought him up here. They phoned me when they got there. They said, come quickly. He doesn't want the dog. But I said to him, look, you know me. The dog stayed with me often. The dog will stay with me. You'll stay here with the medics. And they got him right again. Mm -hmm. You know, they got him over that bout. But... That was my experience of another beige person. I told you of my aunt's dying, and I got there, and she was in blue, and in blue, she was talking to God and saying, God, I've done everything you asked me to. And then in red, she was wanting to be angry with God, which is that red notice me, I should be noticed better. And then she was in purple when she wanted all her family around her. And then when I saw again, I saw the beige. Mm -hmm. And what was the beige? Just the, the smile. No, I'll be better. Hopeful. But in, it was still in the positive beige. And then you can watch the negative beige. And I'm, I'm wanting to sit down with one of the very senior nurses here and ask her what the symptoms are when people are going to pass on to the next life. What that transition, what she's picked up. Mm -hmm. Because I can't go and be there at that time or anything else, but we are in a retirement center or an old age center. And we lose people regularly, sometimes three in one week, sometimes nothing for three months. But it's going to happen. You see it in the dining room. First people walk in and they smile and then later they walk in with a, with a walking stick and then they walk with a walker and then they just get helped in. And then you don't see them. Then you know they're being fed somewhere else. So it's part of life. And that's what people don't understand. Dying is part of life. If you look at the plants, look at that lovely plant you've got behind you there, the purple one. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, I adore purple. And a plant, trees, everything in nature dies. And then if they've sown good seed, the seed grows again. And you get the same thing again, all the cycles of life. So I think the collective unconscious and what we're looking for in the conscious aging is that we sow good seed. Mm -hmm. If we sow good seed, things will continue and grow. As I think Claire Graves sowed good seed. And I think that Don, I know that Don has sowed much seed. Okay. Some of it's weeds. Some of it is. <laughs> some of it is going to flower. But uh, those that come will, and we don't know, they may come from Mars, they may come from somewhere else. And this could all sort itself out again, because there is a higher hand that is there that controls these things. I always go back to Noah and the Ark, when everything flooded, and it, all the religions and belief systems that I've looked at, 
they all have a disaster. Most of them are connected with water, either floods or uh, hurricanes and all kind of things. You don't, it says you don't know the day, you don't know the way, but all you got to do is you're here for today. What do you do for today? Can I wave to somebody today that will give them a smile on their face? Because smiles do nice things inside of you. The research that's going on at the moment is wonderful because it's telling us what, uh, what do they call them? I don't always know the good words. That, uh, uh, endorphins, I think that's the word. It, it puts them in and those are the things that make you feel nice and happy. So the thoughts ignite something else. Isn't nature absolutely wonderful? Isn't life wonderful? I wonder what else I can share with you. So uh, let me ask you, or uh, make a sort of summary of what I understood. Uh, you say, first of all, that returning to base, probably at the end of life, I mean, somebody does not, no? When you have an accident or you die, you know, out of say, Everybody goes back to base. That's what my privacy is. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. That's normal. That's uh, how life is. And you compared it with a flower and seeding good seeds. And then the other thing you also out of the uh, in, uh, collective in conscious, I heard you say also that what you haven't done in this life, you might do in another life. And you came in this life for to do what you did, probably, and maybe you didn't do everything, but who can do everything, you know? But so uh, you are believing that with the end of life, this life, not everything is ended, that you are going somewhere in the collective unconscious, be, be your part there, and maybe you can come back and, and do what else you, you need to do. And then you said something about the Sagomas. This is really a thing which I experienced when I was there, that they could know told me things which nobody could know, especially not them who don't speak my language, <laughs> you know. Mm. So, and I'm reading also Erwin Laszlo um, uh, of, of, about the Akashic fields and things like that. So it seems that even now our Western um, science is discovering <laughs> that there is a a field behind everything which the spiritual um, traditions always said, from where everything comes out and goes back, comes out, goes back, and so on. And I hear you say that you are in accordance with these ideas. And then when your life ends, it will continue anyway. <laughs> Is it like that? Uh, I might have to wait. I don't know. I was here in the 1300s. I was in the lowlands of Holland. Mm -hmm. I was a peasant with a bob cap on and uh, I've lived, relived that. I've had two previous lives that I've relived. People say I had a dream. Okay, it was a nice dream. I had a dream. It was very frightening, but I had a dream. And I... Everybody has got to go their own path. We can talk about it and I can share my path, but it doesn't mean to say your path is going to be the same as mine. Yeah. But the one point I wanted to make there was that how do you said that when you die, let me explain to you how I saw this. Let me see. This lady that was in my class at Da Vinci. Mm -hmm. You remember you were at Da Vinci. Yeah, yeah. I was lecturing. This lady was in the class. And she came in and she was a bit shaken. And her friend was with her. And they said that 
they had just seen a very bad car accident. There was a lady in a very expensive motor car and she was dressed up, jewelry, a Gucci handbag, you know, all the trappings of wealth on her. And she'd ridden or swerved into a concrete pillar. Mm -hmm. And she was in, she was in the car and the paramedics came and she just sat there. Everything had drained out, her orange, her green, her yellow, if she had it, her blue, her purple, everything, she was in beige. She was that there. They got her out the car and they revived her and gave her water and everything. And slowly she picks up, because she didn't know, she didn't want to know anybody. And then she started to ask, when she got to Purple, where's my family? Where's my husband? Find my husband. Then she was in red. Did you catch the man that's in red? And then she went into blue. Oh, I'm so grateful to all of you. Thank you so much for coming to help me. And that's where I saw it in a living system to see the movement from one system to another. Now, you can see I imagined it, but they came back and they gave me the story. And when I said to them, they, the lady herself confirmed that she didn't know where she was, but then she remembered the family and then she remembered why this guy swerved to let her catch him. And then that blue again, what does the law say? And so to me, the, the value systems are a living system and that you can move down and move out according to circumstances. And you can actually create circumstances. Okay. So very often in training, one creates the circumstances to make an impression when that person has to deal with the same circumstances again, they can cope with it. Yeah, and I thought about, you were talking about smiling. We can create uh, consciously circumstances to get us out of this uh, gloomy mood, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And live Which the life we have in a, in a better way than sitting down as long as we can. I mean, when we are totally down in base, probably you said the people sitting like this, they, they cannot consciously, or can they? Uh, you know, I don't know. I haven't been there yet. I'll come back and do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But there is a sort of consciousness there. And particularly when you're dealing with the ad addicts, mm -hmm. they don't want to be helped. You sometimes get it with the bipolar as well, which is something that's gone wrong in the brain. And believe it or not, they're still doing electric treatments. Really? In this day and age, it horrifies me mm -hmm. because they're destroying of the cognitive abilities in the brain by putting all these heavy electricity shocks through that brain. So there's, there's much to learn, there's much to learn. I'm learning day by day whether I'm a collective unconscious that you talked about or conscious aging. Um, you've seen me. I think I'm aging consciously. I have difficulty always remembering words these days and they're going and I accept that because uh, yourself, Rika and all the Ruan, you all tempt me to go a little bit further, to go a little bit further. And I thank you for that. And it's been such fun 
meeting with you and doing mm -hmm. with you. I think the people think here yeah, think I'm absolutely stark bonkers, mad, because I say mm, I'm going to talk to a lady in Italy about the <laughs> <laughs> aging, and they look at me as if to say, oh, "You just make it up. It's not true." <laughs> And I find it so remarkable that you are up to it, that you say yes, and that you are handling the emails, that you are handling the technology. I mean, that's, that, that's openness to life in whatever uh, age we are, you know. I mean, there are much younger people than you who say, oh, no, I don't want to have to do with that anymore. I don't want to learn that, you know. And you are really, for me, you are an example. How old are you exactly? I'm 88. In November, I'll be 89. Perfect. You have other 10 years to be. We can talk. Every two months, we do another talk. <laughs> and you tell me what you found out in the <laughs> meantime. <laughs> well, it's really, it's really uh, interesting. Yeah, you know, it's just a number. Yeah, eight is a number. But a lot of people, when they get a number, it's like if you go to if you go to the hospitals here, you go in, you get a number. You only get attended to when you give when your number comes up. Now, I often think of these people here that move into this care center. They each get given a number, and. You can see them handing in their numbers, which is where they stop that happening. And I'm sure there's a reason for it. Either they've accomplished it. I mean, why do some people die at 20 and others die at 94? Uh, you don't know. One just doesn't know. I come from a long living family. My grandfather was 96. My father was 92, my mother was 93. Thank you, Lord. I've no need to go there. Why am I having to deal with this physical things now? I'd much rather just deal with what goes on in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just lie and listen to podcasts all day long, and yeah, I've got it all planned out. But I'm here now, I'm doing things. And I have Patricia to help me with some of the things I'm not able to, but it's fun. Yeah. Life is fun. And thank you for asking me. And may all those people that are going to listen to it take hope, take courage. If love, it, living is exciting. It can be painful at times, but it's exciting. Okay? Remember that birthing a baby is not, is, it can be sore. It can be uncomfortable. It can be sore. But what a joy that child brings you. So birth some new ideas. It's exactly the same with birthing new ideas. Mm -hmm. Have a lovely week, Heidi. Yeah, thank you. And I wanted also to say that I hope people get inspired to not just believe in the age, the number. Because I wanted to say, when I got 40, I thought I'd become old. And then when I was 50, I thought, now I'm old. You know, We have this tendency to believe into, into strange things, You know, what, uh, what age would be like, or what it is expected from us uh, to be in certain ages. And yeah, we say, oh, it's, it's fine that you are still doing this, which is a sort of ageism, actually. Why shouldn't you? <laughs> you know, yeah, well, so, you know well, my daughters, I thought I wouldn't live past 30. So I've made my daughters learn uh, when they were still very young to plait their own hair. Because I thought if I'm going to die before I'm 30, they'll get a stepmother. And I didn't want her pulling their hair. They must be able to pluck their own hair. It's yeah. good. So you, you have a sort of a plan B uh, in case if it uh, happens, yeah. then be prepared. And actually, we have also in the Conscious Aging series in the previous one, we talked with Jane uh, Rogers. 
and she is helping people to prepare for death in the sense also of the, all the legal stuff, all of your belongings, you know, you don't want to have uh, other people to, to figure out where your things are and where they need to go and things like that. So we have to prepare in all areas for, for our end. And why we don't do it? Because we fear the end, you know, and people like you have the power to inspire people that even if we get older, we can have fun in life. And we can do something which is meaningful. And what you are doing certainly is meaningful. You know, it's, it's just inspiring. It's great. I've been very, I've been very blessed. <clears throat> yeah, but you did something too. It's not the only that it fell from the sky, you know. You engaged into, into what you did and you enjoyed what you did. And you, you, you found a sense in it instead of sitting when you were 30 and you were not yet dead, you didn't sit like this, you know? <laughs> you continued with life. I even did <clears throat> astral traveling and physically out of uh, my body flew around. I've done many things, don't let me start on it, but searching, if you don't, things, will come past you, but if you're searching, more things seem to come. You know, if you're wanting to catch a train, you go to the station. And so I've been to the station time and time again, and I got on different trains and went to different places. <laughs> and you got to different ends. Yeah, that's good. So I thank you very much, Lorraine. This is very, very inspiring. And let's uh, keep up together. And you tell me about your findings, how, how age goes on and how, how, what you find in the meantime, at what station you arrived and what train did you, <laughs> did you take. <laughs> okay, so for today, thank you. And viewers, watch the other uh, conversation we did and the future ones we will do. Okay, bye-bye.